Welcome to today's 3D print. Today is going to be a mega print episode. I'm going to show you some of the mega prints I've been working on. And um, no live stream today. I have something important I need to take care of. Something I've been slacking on. I am Groot. It's my fault. I gotta take care of it. So today you're gonna see these. And for some reason, my cat is incredibly afraid of these things. He's like all puffy tail and like, what are these things? <laughs> have here is three models we have the collapsing katana sword that is by 3d printing world we have the child which is by inspire 3d and we have zelda by kajai i think it's jaka sepidin or something like that i don't know how to say his name but he makes some amazing models and these will all be linked down below let me show you some details all of these models were printed on my Anycubic Chiron with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. So this is Kajai's Zelda. I printed her in two pieces. So you see the brake is right there. And the reason he breaks the model right there is so that you don't need support for the arm. Because the arm prints flat on the bed. Which He's very good at coming up with ingenious ways to do things like that. So because the arm is flat on the bed, this is a support-free model. And he uses the little break in the hair there to also be support-free, which is awesome. These are all put together with gloop. So 1.2 millimeters, two perimeters, a little bit of infill where needed. This thing's heavy. It's probably, oof, I don't know, two kilograms, maybe two and a half kilograms. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> and um the 1.2 millimeter extrusion means i could probably beat somebody with this and kill them <laughs> but the details come out nice you can see even a 1.2 millimeter nozzle can produce perfectly adequate details he even goes as far as to make some of these ends angles so they'll print without support little goof up here you're always going to have little minor issues with complex models when you go with a giant nozzle but surprisingly detailed and surprisingly smooth I am going to put a new hot end on the Chiron see what I can do about improving the quality and his inside is also hollow so you can see it's, a, it's an edge around the outside and he hollowed out the inside so that you can use infill without making the model absolutely massive. Could you imagine if you printed this whole thing solid with um, infill? Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be a very, very heavy model. It's already heavy as it is. My kitties are enjoying the company. He's just licking himself and Ender loves chilling on this spot right here. <laughs> He's a good boy. Next up we have from Inspire 3D. If you are on his Patreon, you can get this model. Link is down below. So I decided to print him life-size. He was actually going to be printed in one piece, but um, the roll fell off of the spool holder. And so I ended up printing it in two pieces. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. This wasn't the roll falling off. I had to switch color. So this part's black and this part's white, as you can see. That's the raw color there. That's why I ran out of the black, or the white, from printing her. And so I switched to black. And I goofed up the switch, so I ended up printing two separate pieces. If you don't feed it incorrectly. Um, this one's all thin. So this is, I believe, two perimeters? Yeah, two perimeters. And no infill. Just a little bit of infill on the bottom, as you can see here. That little bit of infill gives the bottom structural integrity and a flat surface to sit on. And keeps the shape from warping. And then the rest is basically hollow. I believe I turned on infill at the top here to make sure the top of the head would close properly. And I'm surprised by how well these overhangs printed. A little messy here. Had to trim them. You see, a little bit messy right there at the bottom of the ears. But this is basically life-size for the child from the Mandalorian. So that's about as big as he actually is, I think. I mean, we don't have a lot to go by for scale, but it should be pretty close to full size. 
and that was also printed on the AnyCubic Chiron with the 1.2 millimeter nozzle. I used Walmart acrylic paints to paint them. Um, so I just painted the head and hands green and the, the cloak or whatever that outfit is in brown. He needs a second coat though to cover up the difference between white and black there. So when I put another coat of brown on there, that'll fill that in pretty nicely. If you've been to Murph, you probably would have seen Inspire 3D in his table. He usually has some pretty neat stuff. He models his own models. So he makes, he's one of the, one of the people, he's a designer. He's one of the people that makes the stuff we print like Kajai does. So he comes up with some very cool stuff. You want to pick my cat up? Huh? Pick my cat up and hover him in the air a little bit? <laughs> and then we have this monstrosity i still have one more piece to print i've got to print the cap that goes on top i left the cap off so that i could assemble this because you have to assemble it from this end so i will still need to 3d print that cap to put on there I would love to model this with the cap with screw holes so it could be assembled and disassembled so it has to be repaired but this is the collapsing sword by 3d printing world so this is the katana version and it came out spectacular I mean that just really came out nice once again on the any cubic Chiron with the 1.2 millimeter nozzle and it prints surprisingly fast um, basically, I printed these every other. So I printed this piece, this piece, and this piece. And then I printed this piece, this piece, and this piece. So two prints. But by printing every other, I ensure that there's a large enough gap that the parts don't fuse together. Because they are a bear to get apart. <laughs> and especially with the one you'd think there'd be this gap would be plenty for a 1.2 millimeter nozzle. But, um, or for the scale, but when you're printing with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle, any string that does form is 1.2 millimeters thick. <laughs> so the string is really, really strong. So this ensured that I would have zero problems pulling this model apart and I was able to slide the pieces together without an issue. So let me show you how this collapsing sword works. You're going to get a kick out of this. So this is the katana sword. And when you give this thing a flick, oh, that came out nice. <laughs> Your katana sword extends itself. This thing is fully extended, about six feet tall. And it'll be about another inch and a half, two inches taller when I add that little cap on the end there. So it's about six feet tall. I'm six four. This may be five eleven. And you know, when you, you go to, I could probably hit things with this. I could probably beat somebody over the head just and kill them. <laughs> I don't know if it'll break or not. I don't really want to find out because it, you know, this is nice. I don't want to buy more of that filament. But you can put a thumb on the ground and you can retract all the pieces and put it back together into your collapsible katana sword. Let me see if I can do that again. There we go. There's your katana sword. Flick it out to the side so you can see it extend. There you go. Makes a hell of a noise too. Everybody in the room is going to know you just did something. <laughs> and this was done with a Ziltac filament. So this was Ziltac 5 kilogram rolls of white and black that I used to make these. And this is um, um, printed solids mystery orange Jesse PLA definitely getting more of that because that's a nice orange very nice well there you go that's today's mega print episode with some super enormous gigantic prints there's your three prints and our kitties hi kitty hi kitty 
is a good kitty cat. I will see you guys next week.